We're going to Alaska. But first, we're still in Miami. So let me turn on the AC, make some coffee, and then I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. In this first episode of our 2023 epic Alaska adventure, number 12 of the whole 2023 season, first, I'll go through some of the tools I've used to plan this once in a lifetime trip. And then we depart. We'll stop to get a new custom spare tire cover. And then we're driving west to Hot Springs, Arkansas. We've actually never been there. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Before I forget, a couple of days ago I got not one, but two new sticker maps for Mini Tini 4. Because what fun is it to have a full map, so we're gonna start a new one. And hopefully this one will make it to all lower 48 and Alaska. There you go, not my favorite maps, just because of the fact that, first of all, they're different and the borders don't really match. I couldn't find one that the borders really matched or one that had Alaska in the, in the correct place up here next to Yukon. So we're gonna go with this. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is place the stickers of where Minitini 4 has already been. And of course, Minitini 4 was born in Indiana. So that's the first one. By the way, the stickers are this kind of like cartoonish. I mean, they're different. I don't entirely dislike them, but uh, and I'm sure that they'll, they'll, they'll grow on me. It's, I was gonna do some stuff outside, but it's 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 raining out there. It's uh, it's summer in Florida already. Okay, Minitini Four first campsite after Indiana was Cumberland Falls in Kentucky. Then we went to Margaritaville in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We spent one night in Georgia, so I think that counts. And Minitini 4 will go back to Georgia at some point. So here we go. Georgia is on our mind. And finally, Florida, which is where we've been for the... Oops. Ooh, I'm, 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 I almost got Alabama and Mississippi as well. Oops. Yeah, this map definitely feels a little cheaper than the previous ones I... I bought. I, 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 will, I will still put a put a link for you guys. Uh, so Florida, Miami. We've been here and in Pelly Camp. We've been in uh, in Florida for about a month. So Florida definitely goes on the map. And uh, yeah, I was gonna show you some stuff outside, but it is raining. But I think we're almost ready for this trip. And here we have our Canadian provinces. Let's put this in a safe place. Well, yeah, besides hopefully taking Minitini 4 to most of the lower 48, if not all, of course, we're gonna hit some of the Canadian provinces as well uh, on our way to Alaska. And then on the way back, since I might take the Trans-Canada Highway, which would be like another epic adventure. Talking about epic adventures, how do you plan for a trip of this magnitude? You know, we're gonna be out away several months thousands of miles well i'm gonna tell you here but first there's something you haven't seen yet as you may have noticed we have a brand new rv mattress by brooklyn bedding and yes they are this week's sponsor rvmattress.com is a brooklyn bedding brand known for top of the line comfort and quality and let me tell you the difference is palpable plus these mattresses are made right here in the usa they are shipped conveniently to you for free. And let me tell you, these things are kind of heavy, so free shipping is always appreciated. They offer different firmness options, heights, dimension, even RV-specific and non-traditional sizes to fit right into your lifestyle. And Mini Tini 4 here came with the Short Queen, which is 60 by 74. You know, one of those non-standard sizes. And we really want it to be more comfortable, especially with all our travel plans coming up ahead. And Illy suffers from back pain sometimes, so we get the Aurora Lux. A little tall, but I think it is going to be great in the end. It is a hybrid with advanced cooling technology, medium firmness, you know, not too soft, not too firm. And even though we haven't had it for that long, I can already tell that this is going to be a delight. 
day and night compared to the stock mattress. It is very easy to buy online. As I mentioned, free shipping comes right to your doorstep, vacuum sealed, rolled up inside a box. And even though our trailer is tiny, it was still super easy to get it on the bed and unroll it. That was actually the fun part. It is incredible once you break the vacuum, it just inflates in a matter of seconds. The only thing, if you notice, when I deployed it, I didn't realize it was upside down. User error on my part, but not a big deal. With a little help, I was able to get it right side up. The best part about all this is that Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all their RV mattresses in their own factory in Arizona, which means they are able to use premium materials at a reasonable price with no middleman bringing up the cost. They just won Good Housekeeping 2023 Family Travel Award, naming it a top pick, having a big variety of sizes without sacrificing comfort, making it a perfect mattress on the road. Oh, one more thing, you get 120 night sleep trial and it is backed by a 10 year warranty. Let me tell you, I love my RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out rvmattress.com. You can click the link below or go to rvmattress.com slash travelingrobert and get 25% off your mattress with code travelingrobert to help support our channel. Well, we're going to the land of the midnight sun and it, yes, it doesn't really get dark until like late summer. So thankfully we have some blackout shades here in the, in the bedroom and Wanabago is sending me one to put here. I think we're going to pick it up in Montana. So, you know, we're going to be able to keep this as dark as possible uh, in the night. That with the new mattress, we might be able to get a good night's sleep. Here's my shirt, the Arctic Circle, which I picked up in Alaska back in 2010. And that's the, the, the point, you know, when we did that trip in Alaska in 2010, that's when we thought about this idea of doing Alaska by RV. We did the Dalton Highway and we were going to do it again in 2020 for the 10th anniversary. 2020 happened, so we're doing it now, right? And, uh, you know, there are many, many uh, sources of information that we're using uh, to plan for this trip. And one of them, the one that everybody has recommended is the milepost. And I, and I think the milepost is going to be a lot more useful once we're there. I mean, it, look, at it, it's very, very fine print, but it lists all the major highways and it, it, mile marker by mile marker, all the points of interest. So I think it's going to be more useful, not right now, that we are like in that micro planning stage is going to be more useful once we are in the for example on the Alaska highway and uh, I'm tired you know maybe we, we need to go to the bathroom and we can look it up and see you know where there's like a like a <clears throat> pull out or somewhere where we can stop I think that's where it's going to be like the most useful now besides the mile post one of the main sources of information have been you guys you know some of you who have watched other videos about Alaska have done your own research have been there you told me about you know visit this place this, this other place don't forget to visit this glacier or whatnot so that's been one of the main sources of information and then I have to give a shout out to, to those youtubers content creators who who went before me for example i mean first chris and g way back when and and then the you know the the, the going with the winds technomadia a little more recently less junk more journey keep your daydream the mortons on the move and even more recently like a plus k the new state nomads so i've been watching all those videos you know to get that information and my hope is that some of you will watch my videos and get even more information from me and it's, it's like a circle of life right like a like, like a recycling of information and uh, i think i think that's gonna be great now let me show you here on my screen uh, you know some of the other sources that, that I use to plan for this trip. Some of the tools, actually. Okay, if you haven't seen my Google Maps, well, here it is. And uh, I have so many, all these stars represent places around the globe where uh, uh, at some point I want to go, I want to visit, someone has told me about them. And Alaska, of course, is no different. And uh, here we have all these little stars, all these points of interest, for example, going into Fairbanks. Um, here we have an even down to like restaurants that we might want to visit, like, the Jazz Bistro, which I believe it used to be like a Cuban restaurant, so we want to go there. That's the, the, one of the main sources of information, at least in the early planning stages. You know, I've been saving stars on this map for years, probably since 2010. Did we, did we have Google Maps in 2010? I believe we did. Um, now, the next tab here that I want to show you is Road Trippers. And Road Trippers has a very cool thing. Uh, ro road trippers, uh, you, you can enter all your points that you want to hit along the way 
not necessarily in order and it'll figure out the most efficient, the best route to go from point A to point B and, and visit those places. Like for example, here we have Wyoming and this is what, what we're doing uh, soon here. And uh, let's say I want to visit Jackson, Wyoming. It'll figure out what's the best point of it. So it's, it's probably going to change number 15 here and make 15 Jackson, Wyoming and change the route. We're not going to do this because we don't want to drive through Yellowstone with the trailer in tow. We'd rather do that with just the truck. So uh, let me remove Jackson, Wyoming here. But uh, but that's one of the main uh, things that uh, it does well. And then if you can see, if I, if I do some filters, it'll tell me points of interest within a certain number of miles from my route. So I, I can see, oh, maybe I want to see the Brinton Museum or you know uh, pick your uh, whatever you want um i also you know fourth i mean a third uh, source of organization let's say i have my calendar here with everything pretty much so i'm inputting all this stuff in four different places and finally i have a word document where i um you know, where I, you know, do the, whatever I have in green are things that are, are, are already reserved. So, you know, those would be the, 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 the like the day by day, uh, uh, the, the plan, you know, I, I haven't done this type of, this kind of, you know, intricate planning in a very long time. I'd like to think of that word document as the Bible of the trip, if you will. You know, eventually I'll put links to, to our reservation confirmations or different places. Um, and there are other things that, supposedly you're supposed to do for this trip and a lot of people have told me that to get a, a an extra spare tire for the truck and the trailer you know because if you get a flat tire out there in the middle of nowhere it could take a long time and it would be very expensive to to get to get towed i'm gonna take my chances i have a good tire plug kit i have a good air compressor so i'm not gonna get an an, an extra tire but i do have 10 extra gallons of gas in the in the in the bed of the truck just in case because sometimes the difference the distances between gas stations can be very long and um, i am going to get a windshield repair kit because they say that eventually it's not a matter of if but when you're gonna get a cracked windshield so now let me show you some of my tabs here that i have open you know for like quick Quick information like I have free campsites.net and for example we went to camp near Talkitna and we couldn't find anything in town but there's a you know there's a dispersed camping just 20 minutes outside of town so we might do that and um, what else do I have here this is very important because there have been some wildfires in the in the Canadian Rockies so I have my my smoke map you know to see the forecast see if maybe we we need to change our route you know it's it's one of those things that in, in th this time of the year is important here we have the chris and g travels uh, blog which is not as useful anymore because chris deleted all his uh, videos from youtube but still there's some information there here we have some information about like uh, the point of entry where i want to enter canada uh, here we have uh, information about Banff National Park, which is a, a one of the uh, Canadian national parks that I want to visit. Uh, Lake Louise, the same thing. Here we have, um, you know, some of the attractions that we may want to do. We haven't reserved anything yet, but uh, as, as the dates get closer, you know, I want to do the Jasper Sky Tram. Here we have the PDF for the Dalton Highway, which, which is B BLM land. And I believe this is exactly the same uh, document we used to plan our trip back in 2010. And it has, you know, uh, all kinds of information and then mile by mile uh, the, 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 you know, the points of interest and at the end you have a, a fairly detailed map with all the spots where you may want to stop to, you know, to take a picture all the way up to Dead Horse, a mile marker 414. Um, yeah, we might want to take a, a glacier landing tour. We might want to take the Alaska Railroad. We might want to take, uh, well, this is the city of Homer campground. These are a couple of campgrounds in Homer. We haven't made any reservation yet. These are some trails that I might want to take while I'm in, in Alaska. This one is in Anchorage. There's a couple more. There's one that goes to Root Glacier. There's an easy one that goes to a waterfall. Um, and then there's this place where you get to see a, a brown bear eating, eating salmon. It was sold out, but maybe I, I'm on the wait list. So maybe if there's a cancellation, we'll get to see this. This is like bucket list. So, uh, and very expensive too. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to, to do that. Um, 
as another sky tram, the Alaska uh, sky tram. You know, there's so much to see on this trip, uh, kayaking tour. That is, it's kind of overwhelming, but uh, uh, right now I kind of have a bird's eye view of the, what the trip is going to look like. Now, even with all this planning, I'm sure we're going to let Chance and Serendipity take a turn at the wheel from time to time because what's the fun, you know, in having everything planned down to the T. Now let's hit the road. I think I've spoken too much. Our first stop is going to be just north of Jacksonville, Florida. We're going to visit our friends Greg and Angela. So let's hit the road. Well, good morning. It is departure day. And one thing that I'm doing, you know, I'm using this refrigerator bars to keep like our car cargo you know secure i'm not fully awake yet and i'm kind of afraid to to, to leave the monitors up and I, don't, I don't think this table is going to withstand the weight so we might put them on top of the bed for now well here we go if the command hooks hold this would be a great success i mean it's pretty sturdy with the with all the bungees in place. We'll see. With the fridge, we're gonna do the same thing and put refrigerator bars everywhere, you know, to keep everything in place as much as possible. Well, anchors away. Today we find out if my faith in command strips and heavy duty Velcro is justified. <laughs> On the road again. Many times, the most exciting, and not in a good way, and most perilous part of the trip is actually getting out of the South Florida metropolitan area, and Dolphin Expressway here is no joke. They've been building this double-decker over the Miami River since... nobody seems to remember. At this pace, I don't think the Alaska Highway could have been built in this day and age. There's Lone Depot Park, where the Miami Marlins play. Can we go back to the days when stadiums were named after the team that played there? Lone Depot doesn't really roll off the tongue, but then again we also had FTX Arena ever so briefly. Anyway, I digress. I-95 North, pretty clear on this Tuesday morning. 95 South, on the other hand, is a parking lot. Everybody coming into Miami at this time of the day. It wouldn't be South Florida if we didn't get a rain shower here and there. Approaching the Fort Lauderdale Airport, Here's one of those things you can't really plan for, nearly impossible to time. But when it happens, it's really cool. Like a Southwest Airlines airplane landing right in front of you. We get into a little more traffic as we approach downtown Fort Lauderdale. Eventually, we make it to Lake Worth and West Palm Beach. And when the trip odometer passes 90 miles, we are finally out of the South Florida metropolitan area. Let's take a break. Well, we've made it to the Martin County rest area. Let's see how everything fared inside uh, Minitini 4 after our first segment of the road. This but by the way, the, the closest rest area, the first rest area as you get out of the South Florida metropolitan area. Let's take a peek inside. It looks good. I mean, the only thing, you know, the weight of the, of the monitors, they came all the way down to touch the table. I mean, they have nowhere to go but down there. And uh, I mean, the good thing is that they stayed in place, you know, the, the, the bungees held in place, so... We'll take it one bumpy road at a time, but I think this is gonna work. There's no other way to put it. No matter which way you go, 
It is a tedious drive escaping the southern tip of the Florida Peninsula. We do have our occasional downpour, which provides some unwelcome excitement. Or a wreck, which is bad for everybody. It seems like there were multiple accidents, but eventually we're on our way again. Jacksonville, Florida's most populous city, is a welcome sign that today's journey is nearly over. I've always liked this view of Jacksonville we cross the St. John's River. But right now, it is much ducking time. Well, I've lost my faith in these little things called uh, command strips. This one failed, and uh, we don't have a bungee cord anymore. Luckily, everything stayed in place. So uh, we may have to eventually open a hole here and put like an eye hook, but that's a task for another day for now. I'm just gonna remove the monitors, put it on top of the bed, and and it was a good idea, it didn't work. Now, does anybody know if these walls will support an eye hook? So, cause that will work. Uh, anyway, for now, we're removing the monitors for travel until we figure something out. Well, since Mini Tini 4 came with a sticker here, I cannot put my free, my RV sticker there, but look what we've got. We got a spare tire cover, which these RVs, they don't come with them anymore. So, this is courtesy of Greg and, Greg and Angela, Casita RV Life, and uh, man, this is great. So now, if you, if you see me on the road, you can recognize me, just honk and say hello. Gotta make sure I put it straight. Hold on. Is it reasonably straight, you think? You're... Actually, you're close. Maybe turn it just a hair. To the left. There Front. you go. Yeah. Hopefully, I won't have to take it off. Well, let's hope you don't. <laughs> You've got a good trip coming, so... You know, you know Greg, everybody has been telling me, you know, you have to get two spare tires mounted just in case Alaska Ro I'm gonna take my chances, we'll see. I, um, I got uh, one of those uh, tire plug kits. That's your best bet, I always uh, carry one yeah. of those. And an uh, air compressor. And uh, hopefully, we won't need to call any road, roadside assistance because I, I've heard in Alaska, it's a lot more more than here. It's, it's a not, lot harder, and uh, especially in Canada, it's not going to be easy either. So, well, we'll make it better later. The, the camera is making me nervous. <laughs> that looks good. All right. Well, thank you, Greg and Angela. I appreciate it. Well, on the road again. Last night was a. We found a faster route via US 1 North, US 23 North, and US 82 West, which saves 13 minutes. Yeah, sure, go ahead. As I was saying, <laughs> last night was a lot of fun. We played this game called uh, Play 9. <laughs> it was a lot of fun just hanging out with, with Greg and Angela. We got our, our spare tire cover, and now, I mean, we have crummy weather, so I'm not gonna put the uh, you know, set the, the GoPro on the roof, but we're going west, hopefully as far as uh, Montgomery or, or, or Birmingham or as far west as possible. Crossing the St. Mary's River, Georgia. Welcome to Georgia. Oh, thank you. The plan is to drive west all the way to the Rocky Mountains and then start heading north. All this taking some of the less trafficked roads. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset. Sunset, drive into the west. Drive into the west. 
very pleasant drive along the back roads of the Deep South. We're not gonna stop anywhere, we're on a mission, and that is driving to the west. And if the sun ever comes out, into the sunset. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Welcome to Alabama. Oh, thank you. Even though today is going to be mostly a travel day, we are going to drive by Montgomery, Alabama's capital and a very historic city. And here we are, Montgomery, Alabama, cradle of the civil rights movement, particularly the Montgomery bus boycott. I was here back in late 2018 walked around downtown quite a bit, but today we're just going to drive around a little bit, get the lay of the land, and welcome back some other time, because back in 2018 I barely scratched the surface. To be honest, today I just wanted to take a break from the highway and feel like today I had done something besides driving, which, come to think of it, I'm still driving, so never mind. Here on the right, that's Rosa Parks bus stop here on Court Square. And by the way, if you want to watch some of my older videos, just go to my channel page and visit the section called Seasons. And there's a playlist there for each year. I'm also working on playlists for each state, but hey, work in progress. Here on the right, Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church, where Martin Luther King Jr. preached from 1954 to 1960. Eventually, we drive across Birmingham, getting closer to our destination for today which we found the last minute. We were thinking of staying at Walmart or Cracker Barrel, but it is too hot for that in the south in late May here, so we found this RV park right off the interstate. It has good reviews, it is called Appalachian Foothills RV Service and RV Park. All we really need is a quick overnight. They assigned us one of the backing sites in the back, but told us to pull into any of them, and I can see why. The one they assigned us is really off-level. This will be fine. As I said, it is just going to be a quick overnight. <sighs> I'm tired, it's been a long day. Well, this place has got a lot of potential. It is just one mile from the interstate and it's part of like, a, like an RV repair center, like a service center. But uh, this area here, it doesn't really look like it is finished. And for 50 bucks a night, it seems a little steep. But hey, it is convenience. We're one mile from the interstate and we need full hookups because it's still a little warm. I mean, it's already a little warm for boondocking. All right, let's get some work done. I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, let's get something to eat first. I've got some beef kielbasa, so we're going to saute those. I'm gonna chop an onion. Let's do a green pepper as well. Actually, let me flip them over so they get browned on both sides. A little bit of salt on the onions and black pepper. Garlic! 
Everything is good with garlic. I'm going to mix a little bit of marinara sauce I have left over with some dry cooking wine. And this is going to caramelize so beautifully. Cayenne pepper, of course, to give it a little kick. Oregano, cumin. And today I'm feeling adventurous, so I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric and move it around. Some black olives, because why not? And this would pair beautifully with some red wine. Yeah, we got these unbreakable wine glasses. Let's see how long they last. Well, first, RV cooked meal of the trip. Cheers. Well, sunset is upon us. They have this other section that is much nicer, but ours seems like a work in progress. Well, good morning today, destination Hot Springs. And as I mentioned last night, or yesterday, when we arrived, this place has potential. But, you know, the infrastructure is sound, everything is, you know, good. But I don't think they should charge $50 for a back inside in an area that, to put it mild, mildly, it looks unfinished. I mean, and there are no other amenities. I mean, there's Wi Fi, we didn't try it. We never try the Wi-Fi, unless it is like the last resort. Well, we got a five and a half hour drive by the GPS. It's gonna be seven, let's face it. So um, enjoy the ride. I mean, if I had a class A and I got one of the class A sites, I probably wouldn't be complaining. So <laughs> all we needed was one night with four hookups. Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding, cool. riding, riding. Welcome to Mississippi Oh, thank you The birthplace of America's music It looks just like Alabama Actually, we just got into Mississippi And the road is noticeably bumpier and it's got that brownish color, like, I think they used, like, the water from the Mississippi, you know, to, to pave these roads or something. Um, very interesting. Should we stop at the Welcome Center? Riding, have no idea where we'll end up tonight. It doesn't matter. Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV On the next one, we are going to visit Hot Springs, Arkansas, as we continue our journey to the west, all the way to the Rocky Mountains, and then north to Alaska. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Yes, I am riding. Riding in my